Hello and welcome to this new session of Atos Smart Tutorial. I'm Pasquale Manfreda and today, with our test bench, I will guide you through our smart startup procedure for our smart servo pumps. So I'm now connected to the smart servo pump with our dedicated software. Software, which is called SSW Setup, that you can download by our website, atos.com, from the My Atos area. So the motor pump group is hydraulically connected to our test bench. The drive is inside the cabinet, electrically connected, and the servo pump is ready to work. So let's start with our smart startup. This is how our home page looks like. And if you see on the right corner, we see a box that is called smart startup. We are gonna click there to show you the smart startup procedure. This procedure is a guided step procedure that will allow you to have a fast commissioning of the smart servo pump. The smart startup procedure is a four step procedure. Even in this page, you are looking seven different boxes. I will explain you why later on. Let's now start with the first step, the general setting. The general setting will ask the user to insert the general parameters of the servo pump system. The first page is asking to insert the plant information. This could be optional, useful or not for you. In this case, we put as Atos and Plant God uh, and the test bench. Let's go on. The second step is asking how to give the enable signal to the servo pump through digital input or through field bus. In this case, on our test bench, we are using field bus, Profinet. And so I push on field bus. The third step is asking instead for the reference signal. The servo pump will require to have two reference signals, one of pressure and one of flow rate. And in this case, is asking us how to give it through analog or through field bus. Through analog, if you push on analog, you can decide to give it through voltages or through current. In this case, we are again selecting field bus. And we can go on. The servo pump also needs a pressure transducer to be directly connected to the drive. You can use whatever pressure transducer you want, but here, in this step, you need to set him. In this case, let's pretend to use a 010 volt transducer with a full scale of 250 bar. You go on, and you will see that the software will ask to change the deep switches that you find inside the drive. This is our factory default, this is how you need to set the dip switch. This was just an example to explain you. I go back because in our test bench, instead we are using a 420 milliamps transducer with a full scale of 400 bar. In this case, no action required because our default parameters is as we are using on our test bench. We can go on. This step is instead needed in order to limit the maximum acceleration of the servo pump in order to avoid cavitation of the pump. To do it, you need to insert the parameters of your suction pipe layout. Once you have done it, you can go on. Here instead we have the page dedicated to smart cooling. This functionality is a really cool one, it's protected by a patent, and it allows to avoid the overheating of the servo pump. This is an option, and is really useful for those machine cycles which are characterized by long static pressure control phases. To enable it, you can just need to insert the max environmental temperature and the max tank temperature. Once you have done it, you can just go on. This page, instead, is just giving you some information, some suggestion on how to use the slash K, which is the STO function, safe torque off, which is a safety function always present on our drive. Once you have read it, you can just apply and go on. This is the last page of the first step, the general setting. Once you have finished, you can just push on store user and the first step is completed. Now the box has turned green. First step completed, let's go on with the second step, connection check. This step is needed in order to check automatically the electrical connection of the motor. 
In this phase, the motor will revolve, so pay attention. We push on start and then on proceed. So now we are listening some noise because the motor here is revolving, so it's making some noise. And in this box, we can see what is going on. So in few seconds, the procedure is completed. In this case, the procedure succeeded, so the box turned green. In case of negative result, the box is red. So you have to do again the test until the box turned green. You cannot start up the servo pump until this step is not succeeded. So in this case, the result of the test is positive. We can go on, apply next, and then store user. The second step is now completed. Let's go on with the third step, the magnet check. This procedure performs an automatic test to check the magnet status of the rotor. Again, the motor will revolve, so pay attention when doing this procedure. We push on start and then again on proceed. The motor will reach the nominal rotational speed, 2000 RPM. This noise was the motor revolving. The procedure again lasts a few seconds and then the box turns green. This procedure is useful for the predictive maintenance algorithm integrated in our smart servo pump. Once this step is done, again, you already know, apply an X and store user. The third step is now completed. Let's go on with the fourth step, axis auto-tuning. This procedure will perform an automatic optimization of the pressure PID of the servo pump according to the cylinder it's gonna move. This optimization depends so on your hydraulic cylinder, so it must be done directly on your hydraulic circuit. During this procedure, the cylinder will be moved. For this reason, here there are some warnings to be done before carry out the procedure. So after you have read all this information, you can apply next. Here, just as option, you can add the name of the cylinder you are gonna move. Because of course, in an industrial machine, you can have many of them. In this case, let's name it spring cylinder. Again, apply next. This step instead allow to set the limits of your cylinder. What does it mean? This servo pump we are using allows to have as maximum flow rate 96 liter per minute. If you don't want to have this high flow rate for this cylinder, you can limit the maximum speed, for example, to 2000 RPM. The same holds for the pressure. In this case, for our test bench, we have no limitation. After you set the parameters, again, apply next. Again, I repeat, this time the cylinder is gonna move, so pay attention. So before pushing on start, we have to give the enable signal to the servo pump. Okay, here, from disable, it switches to enable. So now let's push on start and on proceed within this time. And we will see that the cylinder is now moved. The cylinder is moving until it found a load, in this case, the full stroke of the cylinder. And in few seconds, the procedure will estimate the volume of oil inside the hydraulic circuit and will set, according to it, the optimal pressure PID. The procedure is completed. The box again is green, so apply next. Before pushing on store user, I want just to highlight that the cylinder has been moved by the servo pump automatically. So the PLC didn't give any reference signal to the servo pump. What you have just to do is to move the directional valve you have between the servo pump and the cylinder in the position in order to move the cylinder in the direction you want to pressurize it. Now we can push on store user. Industrial machines have usually more than one cylinder and each of them with their different size and different oil volume. So each of them needs their own optimal pressure PID. 
our multiple axis functionalities allow to have four different set of parameters saved inside our servo pump. So you can select among them and you can have all the movements of your machine optimized. How to select among them? Through field bus, if you have it, otherwise through digital input. Before completing, I just want to show you the difference of the behavior of the servo pump before and after the auto-tuning procedure. So before is with the default parameters and after is with the optimized parameters automatically calculated by the auto-tuning functionality. Thanks for watching and don't miss the next session of the Atos Smart Tutorials.